Are you or a loved one suffering from depression or are you wanting to stop smoking? Has your doctor recommended you take Wellbutrin, the generic version of bupropion? Are you concerned about possible side effects? If so, then this is a video for you. Keep watching to learn a little more about what to watch out for and how this medication can be a help to you. Dr. Richardson, and this is your home for practical and accurate information to help your family make healthy decisions. This is a channel that focuses on bringing better health to your home. On today's episode, we're going to be going over a common antidepressant named bupropion, or the more commonly referred to as Wellbutrin. Bupropion is the generic version of Wellbutrin, which was released in 1985. Wellbutrin is a medication that is most commonly used to treat depression. But we also use it as an aid in helping patients to stop smoking. And interestingly enough, it's one of the main ingredients in one of the newer weight loss medications called Contrave. It's in a class of medications that we call NDRIs, or norepinephrine dopamine reuptake inhibitors. These are a group of medications that target where the nerves release the hormones norepinephrine and dopamine in the brain, helping decrease how rapidly it's broken down in the nerves, thus keeping your levels higher. Well, butrin is a little bit different than the other antidepressants because it doesn't target the hormone serotonin. It does target dopamine and norepinephrine, which are chemicals or neurotransmitters that help regulate a lot of the functions of the body, like mood, social behavior, appetite, digestion, sleep, and memory, among other things. There are chemicals that play a big role in treating depression, as well as affecting the pleasure and addiction centers of the brain. The majority of the time, we use bupropion to treat those suffering from depression. When you suffer from depression, in addition to things like eating healthy and exercise, counseling and therapy, and getting plenty of sleep, targeting these chemicals in the brain has been very, found to be very helpful in treating the symptoms of depression and allowing people to resume a normal life. So let's talk about who tends to benefit from taking Wellbutrin. The main condition we use it for is clinical depression. With depression, you tend to have symptoms like difficulty concentrating, remembering things, or making decisions. You may also suffer from fatigue, feelings of guilt, worthlessness, and helplessness. You may also feel hopeless, experience sleeping problems, mood swings, have a loss of interest in things you once enjoyed, appetite changes, generalized pain, persistent sad or empty feelings, or even suicidal thoughts or attempts. Well, butrin can do really well in helping take away a lot of the physical symptoms of depression. Specifically, I have found that Wellbutrin helps for those kind of depressions where you have a significant lack of motivation and fatigue. In my experience, patients I have seen, it tends to give people a little more energy and drive than some of the other antidepressants. However, with that, it's important to know that if those who are also suffering from a lot of anxiety may not do well on bupropion. In fact, I often see that anxiety can get worse on this medication. So if you're having a lot of anxiety symptoms, you may want to check out my video on another antidepressant that works better for this called Lexapro. You can click right here if you want to learn more about this. Although depression is the most common reason why we use this medication, there are some other things that it can help with. We can use it as an aid in smoking cessation. We can use it to help with symptoms related to attention deficit disorder, as well as it has some properties that can help with weight loss. Now, we don't oftentimes use straight bupropion for weight loss, but it's one of the main ingredients in that new medication that we talked about earlier called Contrave. If you think you're suffering from any of these conditions, especially depression, it's important that you know that you don't have to live your whole life feeling this way. Go see your doctor so you can get an accurate diagnosis and figure out a good treatment plan for you. Remember, depression is as real of a medical condition as diabetes or high blood pressure and you shouldn't feel any different about treating depression than you would any other medical condition. Okay, so you've talked to your doctor and you both have decided that for your symptoms, well, butrin is going to be part of your treatment plan. So, what should you expect? Well, first of all, it comes in a tablet and there are several different types. You can get it in an immediate release formulation of doses of 75 and 100 milligrams that you typically would take three times a day. It comes in a 12-hour sustained release formulation of 100, 150, and 200 milligrams. And finally, it comes in an extended release version that you would take once a day of 150 and 300 milligrams. We tend to see better success the fewer pills you need to take, so most tend to do either the twice a day or the once a day dosing. Bupropion is like the other antidepressants in that you need to take it daily if you're going to be on it. 
Most people start to notice some difference within one to two weeks, but it typically doesn't reach its full effect for four to six weeks. So, you should be following up with your doctor within two to four weeks after starting on it to report on how things are working. If you're going to be taking it, you want to make sure that you're not missing any doses. Doing so can really affect how well it's going to work and increase your risk of having side effects. Also, unless you're having some significant problems with the medication, especially after being on it a few weeks, you don't want to stop this medication abruptly. Now, after being on it for a while, the brain gets used to a certain level of this norepinephrine and dopamine, and stopping it quickly will really throw you off and make you feel bad. Most doctors recommend that if the medication is working well, you need to take it for at least six months before you think about stopping it. Stopping it sooner than that because you feel like your depression or anxiety is gone increases your risk for having your symptoms return. If you feel like it is something that's making a big difference in your life and you want to continue on it longer than the six months, then it's safe to do so. I have patients that have decided that they just need to stay on it for years and really that works for them. Now, before going into the side effects, you need to be aware that there are some people that really should not take this medication. First of all, if you have a history of seizures, you should probably avoid it. Bupropion can decrease what we call your seizure threshold and make it more likely that you could have another. Other people who should avoid it are those suffering from eating disorders such as bulimia and anorexia, as it can make also these symptoms worse. So what kind of side effects should you look for? Well, as with any medication, you can find a big list of those side effects on the paperwork from your pharmacist. Sometimes these lists can be intimidating, but remember, in the case of Wellbutrin, it's generally well tolerated. I rarely have patients on it that want to stop due to significant side effects. However, any medication has a potential to have some side effects. Some of the common ones that are possible would be such things such as this. You can have some worsening anxiety or agitation, insomnia, headaches, nausea, tiredness, or difficulty sleeping. Uh, you can have some dry mouth, constipation, or even some abdominal pain. These types of symptoms tend to be short-lived in most people, and oftentimes by modifying when you take it, or by taking it with food, you can improve or even avoid a lot of them. And usually with time, they start to get better on their own. Now, one area of concern that a lot of people have is the effect that antidepressants can have on your intimate relations. This can be a known problem with most antidepressants, but the good news with Wellbutrin is that we really don't see it very much. In fact, we will use, sometimes we'll use lower doses of Wellbutrin to counteract this side effect when you're taking other antidepressants. So, if you're having this issue with another antidepressant, you may want to talk to your doctor about this medication. Probably the most common reason I have somebody stop this or any antidepressant medication is that they didn't like the way it made them feel. It may help with their depression, so they don't feel sad anymore, but sometimes they just don't feel happy either. That certainly isn't the goal of this kind of treatment. Our goal is to help lift you up out of that hole that you're in and help you see that life is doable again. If we turn you into a zombie and you're neither happy or sad, we aren't doing you any favors. We still want you to be happy when you're supposed to be happy and sad when you're supposed to be sad. So if you're noticing things like that, then talk to your doctor about other options that are out there. Now, there are some rare side effects that you need to pay more close attention to. This is not an exhaustive list. However, it's important to know that first, all antidepressant medications, including propropion, have the risk of making your symptoms worse at first. You may be feeling really down right now, but if all of a sudden your depression gets worse, or you start having significant anxiety or panic attacks, or even worse, you start having suicidal thoughts, you need to be in contact with your doctor and get help or even go to the emergency room. I always recommend when starting these kind of medications that you confide in somebody you trust and tell them that you're taking it. Let them know about these risks so they can help you recognize when it is happening and assist you in getting the help that you need. Now, other rare side effects can be seizures, manic episodes, certain heart arrhythmias, high blood pressure, increased pressure in your eyes, allergic reactions, and even some liver problems. These are all very uncommon. However, if you start noticing anything different, then make sure you talk to your doctor about what is going on. Now, the worst part about discussing the side effects of medications is scaring you away from taking them. It's important to keep the perspective that the vast majority of people taking bupropion do really well, with minimal to no side effects. So, if you're deciding not to take a medication like this due to a fear of having a very rare side effect, you can potentially be robbing yourself from an important tool in treating this disease. Remember, it's important to keep the perspective that if you're having a problem with the medication, you don't need to stay on it. There are a lot of other options out there, so get with your doctor, 
talk to them about your concerns. Depression can be a very debilitating condition. It's as real as any other medical condition out there. When you have true clinical depression, taking something like Wellbutrin can be a life-altering step. I'm always amazed at what a significant difference this medication has had in the life of my patients. It's certainly not for everybody, and yes, there are other non-medication options out there that may work for you. If, however, you and your doctor feel that this is the best option for your treatment plan, you now have a good foundation of knowledge of what to expect and what kind of side effects to watch out for. And having this information can be really powerful in your life. Now, this isn't an all-inclusive discussion of Wellbutrin, and there certainly are a lot more things that we could talk about. My purpose in sharing this information is to help give information that you can think about and discuss with your own doctor. It's not meant to give you direct medical advice in your own personal situation. So, take this information and discuss it with your own doctor. Overall, I hope you found this information to be helpful, especially in taking away some of the stigma that surrounds taking medication for mental health issues. I'm interested in hearing about your experiences with maybe this medication or others. Let us know in the comments below. Now, I have a lot of great videos out there on a variety of different health topics, so either click here or here to keep watching, or just go to my channel to learn more so you can be well informed and make better decisions about you and your family's health. If you like what you're seeing, go ahead and like this video, subscribe, and hit that notification button so you don't miss out on any of our new content. So until next time, this is Family Med with Dr. Richardson, and remember, take care of your body because it's the only one you have.